Hello everyone and welcome to the Maya Learning Channel. In a recent series I showed you how to use Boss and Bifrost to create realistic ocean waves and splashes. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Mash to voxelize the result, similar to toy blocks or a retro-styled video game. Even though this is technically a Mash effects tutorial, it's going to use some assets and concepts from the Boss Ocean tutorial, so feel free to refer to it for more details. I'm going to start with the finished part 1 file of my Ocean tutorial. To start, I'll increase the size of my ocean plane to 60 by 60 and reduce the resolution to 128 by 128. Also, to get a more stop motion y feel, I'm going to reduce the frame rate to 10. Then I'll open the boss editor and cache all the spectral waves starting from frame 1. This generates an EXR cache to speed up playback. Then I'll select my ocean and create an Alembic cache. Now I can start a completely new file and import my Alembic cache, which gives me the animated ocean without anything else. Time to get started on my MASH network. First I'll create a basic cube and name it Cube Ocean. Then I'll give it a solid blue Arnold shader. I'm not going to use any ocean preset here because I actually want it to look like plastic. So just a nice solid blue. It'll also help if I enable anti-aliasing and ambient occlusion in the viewport. Also, the cube seems a little big relative to the ocean, so I'm going to shrink it. And now I'll switch to the Mesh workspace and make it into a Mesh network. Now, how do I get the cubes to follow the surface of the ocean? Well, the easiest way would be to use the tile as a distribution mesh. So I'll go to the Distribute tab and change the type to Mesh. Then middle drag the ocean plane here. Finally, I'll flood every face center, ignoring rotation. However, look at this deformation. A lot of the cubes squish together and overlap because the faces of my mesh don't actually stay square. That isn't really what I want. So instead, I'm going to use a different approach. Rather than use the plane to literally lay out my cubes, I'm instead going to use it to generate voxels, or 3D pixels. I can then tell MASH to generate cubes within those voxels, guaranteeing they won't overlap. So first I'll change method to voxel, which gets me a grid that sort of follows the ocean. To eliminate these gaps, I'll reduce the voxel size to match the cube. Well, that's something. Actually, if you were going for a really retro effect, then this might work, but I want something a little closer to my original ocean. The problem is that because voxels are square, they only have a limited number of increments, which eliminates any in-between detail. So I need more definition, particularly in Y. To get that definition, I'm actually going to stretch my ocean plane up. This allows me to fit in a lot more voxels. Then I'll squash everything back down with a transform node. And then I'll just hide my plane and play the scene. This gets me a much finer degree of detail. Which you can see is due to the flatter blocks. The nice thing about this is that I can now play with the wave heights using the transform node. I'm still not really sold yet because the water is too uniform. I need some foam to go with it. I'll start by disabling my current mesh network. Then I'll need something to act as a foam primitive. For a clear differentiation, I'll use a cylinder this time.
Let's reduce the number of subdivisions for performance sake, and then soften the edges. I'll also shrink it down using my cube as reference. And give it a new white Arnold shader. I'll just give it a quick rename. And then turn it into a mesh network. And re-enable my ocean. To create foam, I'm going to place a cylinder on every cube, then hide those where there shouldn't be foam. However, rather than create another set of voxels that I'd have to manage independently, I'll just add a merge node instead to reuse my cube positions. I should probably rename these too so I don't get too confused. Now I'll select my merge node and go to the outliner, and middle drag my ocean node into it. Next, I'll bias the point positions towards the ocean network, then add a bunch more points via the distribute node. And finally, I'll need to translate them all up slightly to sit on top of the cubes. There they are. Cool. So to hide some of them, I'll use a visibility node. The only question now is how should I hide them? I could try doing it randomly, but as you can see, it doesn't really produce very foamy results. So instead, recall the boss cache that I generated earlier. This cache actually consists of image files representing waves and foam respectively, which is something I taught in my Creating an Ocean tutorial. Now I can use this foam one specifically as a strength map. So I'll just source the file. Make sure to take a foam file. And check use image sequence. I'm still not seeing anything though because the map is too dim. One way to fix that is to overexpose it down here in the color balance. that still doesn't look the best. The foam doesn't really clump together properly. The problem is that the image has too many shades in it, while the visibility node only deals with visible or invisible. So ideally, I need to bake all these shades down to just two. With the file node selected, I'm going to open the node editor, then show all its connections. From here, I can actually zoom into the connection between the EXR cache and visibility strength map. Instead of passing along this info directly though, let me route it through a luminance node first. This gives me the transparency of each pixel in the file. Then I'll just run that through a condition node. First, I'll feed the transparency into the first term. Then, if the result is above a certain threshold, I'll force it to be white instead, which is the same as 1, 1, 1. And then I'll try a threshold of 0.1 to start. And finally, feed that back into the visibility. Okay, so 0.1 was apparently much too high. Let's try 0.01. There we go. And the beauty of this approach is that I can control the foam just by changing the threshold. Then I'll just add some HDR lighting.
and render the whole thing. That's a little dark, so maybe I'll up the light's exposure a bit. And tweak the foam emission so it appears brighter than the water. Yeah, that's pretty good. And if I render sequence, Now I could easily stop here, but why do that when I can kick things up a notch? So I'm going to add a pixelated splash to my ocean using everything we just learned. This will be based on the splash I created in my ocean tutorial appendix, so let me just import the Alemba caches of those Bifrost sims, both liquid and foam. And for good measure, I'll also import my Meteor. And even a bonus arrow smoke trail, too. Now I'll do exactly what I already did before. So starting with the ocean cube, I'll make a new mesh network. I do need to make one slight alteration though. Notice that the splash doesn't exist before frame 15. Since I can't voxelize nothing, I'll need to temporarily use a different distribution method until the mesh does exist. I'll do that by keyframing a scatter on frame 14. But I'll set the number of points to zero since I don't actually want to use that method and keyframe that too. Then once we actually do get to frame 15, I can reverse all that and continue as normal. So then I'll load in my splash geometry and shrink down the voxels. Don't worry about this warning at frame 14. It's merely stating the problem that we just took care of. Then to get a bit more detail, I'll just stretch and squash the network. And finally, rename it Splash. Then I'll repeat the whole process again for the Splash Foam and Smoke Trail. However, when it comes to the splash foam, we don't really need a squash or stretch. Instead, I'll just widen the cylinders a bit with an offset node to give it more volume. Then just repeat for the smoke trail. I can also turn on some viewport lighting, and I guess for good measure I should voxelize the meteor too. I can even give it a splash of color with a color node. And now we're ready for a final render.